I absolutely love how flexible my bookkeeping job is. I've been doing it part-time for about 10 years and I have two kids. Here is what I did today as a bookkeeper. Today I was actually working on my own business books, which I actually don't show you guys that much, so I thought this might be interesting. Here's a quick list of the things that I completed and we'll go through each one. First of all, I had to go find some missing transactions. Then I categorized income, which included splitting up some income. I'll show you what I put in my ask my accountant and then we'll do some payroll tasks. So starting out with those missing transactions, I got into my books and truth be told, I have not done these in a long time. So I had since January that I had to finish. Let me know in the comments if you tend to neglect your own business books as well. Plus I don't have that many transactions each month. So it's usually pretty easy to catch up. This is a good example of how a small client might feel also. So some clients you might only do quarterly or even once a year. And so then you're doing a lot of months all at one time. And that actually can be more efficient to do it that way because you can kind of bulk some of the tasks. So this actually confused me a little bit at first because I did have a few transactions in the beginning of January. I think those had fed in from last year when I did it. And then I had a bunch of gusto transactions in the middle of the month. So it looked like I had kind of a lot in January in the beginning of February. But upon closer inspection, I realized they were just my gusto payroll transactions. So there, I think there were six of them at the end of January. And then there was a big gap until like February 21st. So basically the things that I was missing were from January 3rd until February 21st. So I did not have my bank transactions in there. So what you do if this happens is you can go back to your bank and download those transactions. Some banks have different amounts of time that they'll feed into gusto or that they won't let you go back too far. But usually this solution will work really well if you have like a year of transactions to do. So first of all, you need to, like I said, log into your bank. You'll have to find where it says download transactions. I'll put some screenshots in here about how it looks in my bank. There's just this big download button when you see all the transactions like in a big list. Um, so you just hit that download button and then the next screen looks like this. And so it just asks you the date range that you want. So I put in the date range that I need. And then there's a bunch of file formats. I think there was like three different options here. You can get in a just an Excel document maybe a Quicken one, and then my bank does have QuickBooks. So that is gonna be the best one to use if that's an option. If not, you can also do an Excel document. Every single bank I have seen gives you an option of Excel. So you just download that, save it to your computer, and then you go into QuickBooks and you upload it. So here's what it looks like in QuickBooks. Anytime I'm not showing you a full screen, it's just for privacy, either for my own data or for clients' information, things like that. So basically this is in the right-hand corner of when you are in the bank transactions field, and there's a bunch of different options but you can just um, in this little drop down here you can say upload from file that's where you want to go for that and then it just kind of walks you through this process it asks me a few different questions uh, just basically like where what bank account do you want it in and then you just hit that done button and then all of the transactions are in your bank feeds waiting for you to categorize so just like they had fed in from bank feeds except for we uploaded them so if you haven't done them before it's not very hard but it is an extra step so once i finally had all of my transactions in there i was able to move along to categorizing them so i started out with my income and i do break down my income into multiple categories this is kind of optional but why i like to do it is it gives me data on what is working and what's not in my business and then I can obviously do more of the things that work. And so as a bookkeeper, you could do this like per client if you want. Um, there are other reports you can pull like per client or you could do it, maybe you have different types of clients. Maybe you have like medical clients and you have real estate clients. And so you wanna know which one is making you know better money for your business. So you wanna split it up that way. There's tons of ways you can do it. And if you are curious how I make money, I'll tell you like my four main streams of income because a lot of people are curious about how people on YouTube actually make money. The first stream of income is the book my bookkeeper income so any money that I get from the clients I have right now so that's obviously probably what most of your income stream is um, the next one is YouTube Adsense so this is money YouTube pays me when they run ads on my videos and this goes up and down I don't really have a ton of control over it because sometimes even if my videos are getting more views the money is down it just depends on how much the advertisers are willing to pay my third income stream is selling my classes so anytime you purchase my one of my two classes which I have one class that helps you start a bookkeeping business in 30 days and the other one helps you get bookkeeping clients so obviously that is income that goes directly to me and then I have affiliate links for other people's class 
classes. So you guys know I've talked a lot about Bookkeeper Launch. That's my favorite one that's all inclusive. And it just gives you a lot of support and more in-depth training than my two classes do. And I also have this spreadsheet you can download if you want. It has a whole bunch of different Bookkeeper classes and how much they cost and kind of comparing and contrasting them. So anytime that you hear about something from me, and you wanna support my business, definitely just use my link. It doesn't cost you any more money. It's pretty easy for you. And it really does help me out a lot. All right, so I categorized my income into those four buckets. And one thing to note is that some of the things I had to split. So this sounds a little bit more complex, but it's super easy. So maybe for example, one month, three affiliates paid me through Melio. So the total that hit my bank account was $300, but that was actually $100 from three different sources. So I want to kind of split that up. And so basically you just click into it, split it, and then type in the amount for each of those vendors. So I categorized the transactions, I'll let you know the things that I put in my Ask My Accountant bucket, the category that I use to kind of put things that I want to deal with later. So first of all, there was a Stripe withdrawal and I'm not sure what that was for. So I basically just need to log into a different platform and look up and see what that was. The next thing was a kind of a weird deposit that I didn't recognize. So it was like $53.06. And so I don't know what like what that money came from. So I just need to dig into that a little bit. I think I'll check my bank account and see if that gives me any more info. And the other two items were kind of like more tax things. So I had to pay the Department of Revenue for payroll tax. And I wasn't sure why I wrote an actual check for that. So I need to go look back in Gusto. That was back in January. So maybe it was something to do with my taxes at the end of the year. I can't quite remember what that was. So either if I can't figure that out, I will ask my tax accountant who does my taxes. And then kind of similarly, there was something came out for unemployment. And usually I think that should be synced by gusto or I don't know. I, that was an unfamiliar, something unfamiliar to me. So that's just something I need to do more research on. So I wouldn't get too derailed and distracted. I just put those four transactions in as my accountant for now, because then I can continue reconciling and doing that whole process. Then I can look those things up later. Okay, then I had most everything categorized, but I had all of these Gusto transactions. And what it usually looks like is when I have a, something from Gusto, my payroll company, it says match. That lets me know that Gusto has fed all of the information into QuickBooks that is necessary to make a journal entry for those payroll transactions. But the problem was I had a bunch of Gusto transactions that did not have that match. So I had probably like five months each with three transactions. So 15 things that were not synced from Gusto. So I logged into Gusto to kind of see what was going on. The first place I checked was the apps area. So when you're in Gusto at the very bottom, there's something called apps and then you can connect a bunch of different things. But I searched for QuickBooks Online, which I know is already connected because I connected it a long time ago. And then from there, I went to the settings and sure enough, my sync was turned on. And so that was not the issue. So what I did was I actually turned it off for a little bit so I could try to do some manual syncs. I feel like the word sync is hard to say, but you guys get that, that it's syncing back and forth between Gusto and QuickBooks. So I turned off the automatic sync so that I could work with a little bit. And then I had to kind of remember what to do. I think I, this had happened to me before, but I couldn't quite remember how to fix it. So I searched around a little bit and I ended up going to pay history. From there, I clicked on the contractors tab and in pay history, there was a list of all the different payrolls that I'd run this year. So there was 10 of them or whatever, nine of them. And so I could go into each one and at the very bottom, there was a little button that says sync with QuickBooks Online. So I could select the ones that I needed that weren't synced and I hit that button and that actually did do the trick. So I hit the sync within that was in Gusto and then I refreshed my QuickBooks page. And sure enough, all of those little green match buttons showed up in QuickBooks. So I was like, yes, I don't have to manually input all of that data. And while we're in Gusto, I'll tell you guys how I do payroll for my own business. So my business only has one employee and that is me. And you can talk to a tax person to see at what point it's helpful to pay yourself as an employee. There's usually like a dollar amount. I think it's like $50,000 or maybe a little bit more, um, but it depends on your personal situation. So I pay myself as an employee of my business and then I have three contractors that work for me. And they used to track all of their time in Gusto and then I think they decided that it's actually easier for them to track it outside of Gusto. But at the end of each month, they just log into Gusto and they input all of their hours in one lump sum. And they all have different hourly rates and so Gusto calculates it all. 
And then I just go to the payroll tab and it's super e fast and easy to pay anyone, especially contract. So I just make sure their amounts are correct and click run payroll. And a really good thing that is helpful about Gusto is that they are filing a bunch of taxes for me. So I don't have to worry about, you know, paying the IRS at different points and paying payroll tax and paying Medicare and all this stuff. So that is really what you're paying for when you pay for Gusto. And it does feel a little bit expensive for my small business. It's like over $100 per month. But for me, it totally is worth it because it would take me so much time and effort to figure all that stuff out and I would be scared I was doing it wrong. So the next step in my process would be to reconcile. I actually didn't have time to complete that today because it's getting close to about one o'clock. Usually I stop work around like 12.30 or one. I start work around nine. I probably take a couple breaks, take a lunch break, and then usually I stop around 12.30 or one, like I said. So I love my schedule, just the hours I work and also the flexibility, the fact that I didn't necessarily have to be doing this these tasks on any certain day. Like I'm waiting till October to um, complete complete my year of books, which maybe that's not totally the best, but you have a ton of flexibility like I started out this video saying. So thank you guys for watching and let me know what other videos you're interested in and I'll talk to you again next week.